in real estate since the beginning of history is location, location, location. And this house for 203 years has been considered the premium location in Southport. And I'll tell you why um, I think that. So as you know, um, Southport was founded in 1792. And of course it wasn't called Southport then, it was called Smithville. And it was named after a gentleman named uh, Governor Benjamin Smith or sometimes referred to as General Benjamin Smith. Now, he wasn't the governor then. Um, he, that was another 20 years in his future. Uh, but he was a politician. He was uh, an influential and wealthy man in Brunswick County. And um, he was also a veteran. He had served in the Revolutionary War, he, uh, where he achieved the rank of colonel. And he was an aide-de-camp to General George Washington. So he had accomplished a lot when he came back. He was about 21 when he was in the uh, Revolutionary War. Then he came back here. He was uh, a very influential man. He came from uh, his family in South Carolina. His father's family was uh, very prestigious there. His mother's family, uh, his, his grandfather was Roger Moore. So some of you have heard him called King Roger. He owned the Orton Plantation. So he had a lot of influence and wealth on both sides. Um, he, uh, uh, and I'm saying all that, so he also had a lot of property because he had so much. So he had property in, in Wilmington. He had property in Brunswick County. He had property along the, the Cape Fear River. He had uh, Belleville Plantation. He had a house on Orton Plantation. Um, and he also had 20,000 acres that he had in Tennessee that he had gotten uh, as part of, uh, for serving in the, in the military during the Revolutionary War. They gave him 20,000 acres there. And he ended up eventually uh, donating that to the University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill because he was a big proponent of education. So I tell you that so that you understand he had options. He had a lot of places that he could build his summer house. But he chose this location right here in Smithville because he thought it was the best location in Smithville. Now, some of you might be thinking, oh, wait a minute. I, I know how Smithville started. I know that they divided it up into 100 lots and they had a lottery. He probably just won this, this lot in the lottery and bought it and then told everybody it was the best location. <laughs> this in the lottery. He did win the right to purchase it, but he also owned 10 other lots in Smithville, and several of them were on Bay Street. So he could have chosen any of those lots to build his summer house, but he chose this one. Now, I keep mentioning it was a summer house, and the reason for that is because that's the, really what Smithville was back then. It was a place for people to come in summer. So when you think about Smithville, they were maybe 300 people live, actually living here. You had the fort, you had the soldiers, you had um, some fishermen, some camps with fishermen, you had um, some river pilots, and maybe a few uh, boarding houses, bars, places like that. Um, but you didn't really have any, um, any commerce or any kind of businesses here. So the people in Wilmington, uh, the, the upper crust of Wilmington, saw this as a great place to come and spend the summers. Uh, they would, and so um, they would come down. That's who bought all the lots. That's who built the houses. They would come down. They would socialize with each other. They would socialize with the officers in the uh, in the fort. And so they had um, a wonderful time there. I'm going to. So he built um, this house, uh, a house here. Um, they, the locals called it the mansion. So it probably was a very nice house. I'm going to read you just a, a section right here from this book. This is a book. Um, it's published by the Southport Historical Society. It's called. Uh, reminiscences of Wilmington and Smithville Southport 1848 to 1900. So the title pretty much tells you what it is. It's written by Dr. Uh, Walter Gilman Curtis and he'll be important. I'll be talking about him in a few minutes because he actually used to own this house that you're in right now. Um, but I want to just, and you're all going to be getting um, a copy of this, this book to take home with you. So I'll just tell you, I'm reading from page 59, if you want to read it tonight before you go to sleep. Um, okay, so here's what he said. A large, he's talking about uh, the house that Governor Smith built. 
a large and perhaps at that time a palatial residence, which might have been called the Governor's Palace, stood at the corner of Bay and Pot Street. Who knows Pot Street is? Atlantic. Yeah. It was built by Governor Smith for his residence and stood on the most beautiful spot that then existed or does now exist on the Cape Fear River. Mm. The old house was entered from the front and as you entered and looked towards the back, your eyes would have rested upon a spacious and highly ornamental staircase which led to the upper rooms. On the lower floor there was drawing rooms, on one side the grand entrance hall, and on the other a large dining hall 30 or 40 feet long. The summer home of Governor Smith was his favorite resort as its situation was healthy and overlooked a beautiful bay and Atlantic Ocean and the island across the bay on the south formed a lovely green spot for the eye to rest upon, making an agreeable variety in the scenery, which without it would have been a water view, somewhat monotonous and glaring to look upon on a hot summer day. <laughs> we may believe, and in fact we know, that this mansion was a home where lavish generosity and hospitality prevailed. Many distinguished visitors from both the Carolinas were entertained in this delightful home. And that makes sense because we know he had ties from both South Carolina and North Carolina. And that really exemplified why the people from Wilmington came down here in the summers. It was, it was seen that Smithville was, was healthy with its salubrious breezes. It was a cooler climate than Wilmington. They thought it had better air than Wilmington did. Uh, it was a little more swampy in Wilmington. And there was less, uh, less fewer mosquitoes, less, less disease down here, less yellow fever. So they came down for that. Um, after um, Governor Smith passed away, then another governor, uh, Governor E.B. Dudley, he spent his summers here from 1838 to 1848, for about 10 years. Um, and so he enjoyed the summers here. I don't know whether he purchased it or he just rented it. Then uh, in, uh, it started to fall into disarray after that. You know, it had been quite a while since it had been built. Um, in 1859, uh, a man named Thomas Mears purchased it. Now he purchased both, um, he purchased the house, he purchased both lots 20, which is what this one is built on, and 21. So he bought, purchased two lots, he purchased the, the mansion and all of the outbuildings. He built, he purchased that for $2,500. And it was a wow. tear down. So he basically tore down the existing house. The only thing that was left was the foundation, uh, which was the, the original foundation that was uh, that Governor Smith had, had built today. My understanding is it's still the foundation today. It's made with ballast stones that were brought uh, on the, sh the, sh the ships as they came across the sea. So he, he used that foundation and he built a house there. So he did that in 1859. So who's a history buff? Who knows what happened in 1861? Civil War. Yes, the Civil War. How good time. He probably finished it just in time for the Civil War. So we had the Civil War, and then we had, you know, uh, the, the, the Union soldiers, the Yankees were here, and then there was the um, Reconstruction. So a lot of things happened. Um, but then things began to get better, and um, a couple things happened. Um, the um, they filled in the, the New Inlet and with the rocks, and that improved the, the flow of the river, right, coming down from Wilmington. And all of a sudden, Southport began, Smithville, began to have a deep water port. And uh, Dr. Curtis, who I mentioned before, I'll find a picture of him so you can envision who I'm talking about. He, uh, he, was a very, he was an influential man in Southport. Here's his picture. He was uh, he served a term as a mayor. He was the um, physician for the, um, the quarantine station. He held a position he held for 30 years. He was a leading businessman, and he was a visionary. And he felt that with that deep water port that Southport could become, Smithville could become a, a really significant port. And what would we need? Well, we'd need the railroad. So he was, he was keen on bringing the railroad here. He was thinking they could bring coal from England right to here and then ship it inland without having to go up north. And what would we need if we were going to have all those, those, that business and all that stuff coming down there? Well, we needed a hotel, a really nice hotel. So he purchased the, um, this, this home and he began to turn it into a hotel. So he began working on it. It, um, it had three floors. There were, uh, on the first floor, there were 15 rooms. On the second floor, there were 15. 
15 rooms, and on the top floor there were 12 rooms. There were, I'm trying to think, there were 38 doors, there were 55 windows, there were 38 doors, there were nine hallways. There was a dining room that was 20 feet by 60 feet, it had 12 windows and two doors. So uh, you're thinking, this is a big house, but how did they fit all of that into here? He didn't. He expanded it. He built a hotel to go all the way through the length of the lot, all the way to Moore Street. He extended onto it. Um, so it was quite, quite a, a feat. Oops, not this one. So I'm going to show you. This is an ad that was in the um, in the newspaper in, in Wilmington in 1882, um, announcing the opening of the Hotel Brunswick, new summer resort. See, summer. It was a seasonal uh, hotel, just like the Holmes Hotel Brunswick. Smith. and will be open for the reception of guests on the first day of June, 1882. It commands a splendid view of the harbor and the ocean. Steamers and ships pass in front of the door. Sailing and fishing are unsurpassed. Bathhouses for the use of guests to you know, change their clothes to go bathe in the river. A good band of music and a ballroom will be open day and night. the different railroads. Daily Mail and Telegraph Office near the hotel terms moderate special rates of families. BL Perry proprietor. So Dr. Curtis didn't run the hotel. He owned it, but he hired an experienced person to run the hotel. And they did an excellent job and they had these moonlight excursions. People would go on the steamships, they would travel down by moonlight and they would come to um, here for a ball. Now you might be thinking, how did they how did they fit a ballroom and a, and a bowling alley into building even if it went all the way to Moore Street. Well, he didn't. They built another building um, that was the pavilion. So here's some pictures of it. This is a sketch from 1890s and a photo from 1900. And so the pavilion was, um, I'll put these up here, was across the, the, the road and it was very large. And that's where the ballroom was. I'm assuming that's where the bowling alley was. Um, so, and the band, you know, played night and day. So that and then that's where the bathing houses were. Um, they also, um, and then near there, they also kept sailboats for the use of the guests, little small recreational sailboats to take out on the river and enjoy themselves. So that was the, the pavilion. So they had these beautiful dances. They had people come um, all the way from Charlotte. They, they, large groups came. They would take the train to Wilmington and then they could take the steamships down. So it was, it was just lovely. Um, so, that was all good, but then...
a couple of places. I think it was it's over at uh, Yopon Extension near Lenox Street. I was it Swayze who did that? Say again. Swayze. I don't know if Swayze did that. That's an interesting yeah. question. Maybe he did. I don't know. Yeah, he was. He was. He was the only mover of homes in, during that period of time that I could find. Okay, that's interesting. I'll check into that. He owns so much. Um, so anyway, so they they kind of carved it up, and so then the house became. I mean, as you can see, it's huge. Um, but it was more manageable, right? It was it was something that you could really kind of get your arms around. And so um, it served various purposes then throughout the 1900s. It uh, it served as a uh, sometimes as a um, as an inn, uh, sometimes as a commercial st establishment. My understanding is that, and Stuart would know more about this, but uh, sometimes there was a, an ice cream shop in it. Sometimes a, a dance studio. Um, there, it obviously was a residence. It was. Uh, it was sometimes it wasn't in like more of a, a bed and breakfast. So, in I believe 1957, the Arrington family bought it. Is that all right? 59. 49. Okay, I'm on. So in the 19th, I should have just stuck with the mid century. Mid century. <laughs> Not carried away. In the mid 1900s, uh, the Arrington family purchased the house and moved here. Also owned it towards the end of the uh, the 1900s. Right? There we go. To 1998. Um, so I'm going to defer to you for that portion of its history. But one thing I think is interesting is that the house uh, pretty much took on whatever it was that the owner needed it to be, whether it was a commercial establishment or a hotel or a residence. It just said, "I will do what you want me to be." And the one other thing that this house did, and I think this was uh, when Stewart owned it. So uh, this house has been in several movies. I'm not sure how many in total. I was able to find three. So it was in, uh, there was a house, uh, a movie uh, produced by Oprah Winfrey called The Wedding that had Halle Berry in it. There was a movie called Summer Catch with Jessica Biel. And there was a movie, uh, a Disney movie called The Pirate Kid, uh, Bluebird's, Tre or Blackbird's Treasure. Um, was there another one? never released as a movie, it was on TV. Okay. And I can't okay. remember the name of it. Okay. But there was another one. Okay, great. So Stuart has more information on that. Pretty. Um, was in one. Summer Pretty. Summer Pretty. Yeah. 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 So these are available on YouTube or whatever. So, um, so all right. So I've, uh, Tony. Yeah. We went out of time.
not only that, he goes,